I wouldn't do that if I were you, soldier. Wouldn't do what, Sarge? I wouldn't use my gas mask carrier for a pillow. Why not? Time I got a little comfort out of it. Give me plenty of discomfort. Yeah, but time may come when you'll need it for plenty more than comfort. Then you'll wish you'd treated that baby with more respect. How's that, Sarge? Well, maybe I can make myself clear by telling you about a fellow in my outfit in the last war. When the call came in 1917, it was just like this time. Butchers, bakers, bankers, clerks, carpenters, cowboys, guys from everywhere, all left their jobs to do a job. I guess your dad was among them. Well, between basic and beefing, we learned how to be soldiers. Then came the day when they issued us gas masks. Funny looking contraptions. <laughs> a lot of the guys laughed about them. But they didn't laugh when the instructors told us what was happening overseas. About the death. The casualties. All except Joe. You know Joe, he's in every outfit. The last time and this time. Careless, paying no attention, dog in the job. He thought it was all a game, and his gas mask was a nuisance. Well, I guess it was sort of a nuisance when you had to drill in them for hours and take five mile hikes with them on. But the good soldiers came out in pretty fair shape. Joe, though, by not handling himself and his mask right, was plenty tired. And every time at inspection, it was Joe who messed up the detail. Just a plain case of carelessness. Well, we learned to live with those masks, fighting and firing with them on, doing every field maneuver, until they became, well, they became a part of it. All the officers and the non-commissioned officers were given special instructions in the proper use and care of the gas mask. Then we had our first gas test, the real McCoy in a gas chamber. But we had confidence in our mask. That is, all of us except Joe. That test made a big impression and gave us a lot more respect for our gas mask. But Joe, as usual, thought it was all a joke. Went on handling his mask as though it were just a piece of useless equipment. They put us through the identification course. We came to know that mustard smells like garlic or horseradish, that lewisite smells like geranium, and phosgene smells like musty hay. Well, not long after that, the old man got us together again for the last time before going over. He warned us, take care of your equipment. You'll find that your life depends upon it. Then we went over. And after some more combat training, we headed for the front to join the big push. We were warned that the enemy was using chemical agents and to be on the alert at all times for a gas attack. We were sent out on an advance patrol through an area that had been gas. The corporal knew that mustard gas stays on foliage and ground for several days. He detoured us to the windward to avoid the area. But I'll give you one guess as to who disregarded the corporal's warning and walked right into the wood. Yeah. Yeah, it was Joe, and this time he was in real trouble. Got mustard on his legging, and the corporal had to remove it. The position of the contaminated area was marked on a map, which was dispatched to field headquarters. A hand-driven collective protector was used at headquarters so that the general and staff could work without masks. 
notation was made of the gassed area. This information to be passed along to all troops with instructions to detour the section. The corporal called a halt for a rest period. At all times, including rest periods, protective equipment must be handled carefully and kept in readiness. Carelessness with the mask may result in putting it out of commission and place the soldier in danger. And that's exactly what Joe did. He busted the glass when he used the carrier as a pillow. Well, the detail proceeded on its mission. When suddenly the enemy attacked with Fosgy, we put on our masks and started off again. It was a lung irritant, but our mask gave us plenty of protection. Not Joe's, though. He took a few steps and dropped. He realized then and there that it was no joke, but it was too late. We couldn't do much for him there. The corporal checked and adjusted his mask, tried to make him as comfortable as possible. We had to go on, leaving Joe behind. The rest of us completed our mission and returned to the outfit okay. Joe was our only casualty. They brought him in on a stretcher and shipped him back to the base hospital. That's only one case, but there were many more. Joe was only one of the 70,752 men who were gas casualties in our army alone. Gas was taking its toll right and left. The enemy used it first so we were surprised and unprepared. With the blitz methods of modern warfare, the danger of surprise is greater than ever. But proper training in the handling and use of protective equipment and the proper respect of the soldier for that equipment will give him protection and enable him to engage the enemy and turn the attack. See what I mean, soldier? I'll say I do. Well, I gotta beat it. Thanks, Sarge, for a story I'm gonna remember. It's okay. On oh, another thing, inspect that mask thoroughly and often. You never can tell when you might need it. <laughs>